Okay, so we covered quite a lot of ground in the last lecture, discussing quadrangular sets and how they're invariant under projectivities. And so now we're going to reap the rewards by looking at some really interesting results. Um, in particular, the ideas of the trilinear polar of a point, which is a fascinating idea from the French projective geometer points a lot and also we're going to have a look at the idea of harmonic nets. Harmonic nets are really um, exotic kind of objects really because in continuums they're infinite sets of points um, which have some very special properties. So let's just recall the definition of a harmonic set so a harmonic set is a section of a complete quadrangle. A complete quadrangle is where you get four points and draw all the lines between them. And it's a section which passes through two of these diagonal points. The diagonal points are the places which are not original vertices where two of these lines meet. And um, here we see in this picture a complete quadrangle which has been with its lines drawn in red, its vertices drawn in blue, and we've sectioned it with this black dotted line. And these four green points on this dotted line form a harmonic set by the definition. So one of the key results which we established last time was that given any three points on a line, we can find a fourth point which ends up making a harmonic set. So in this example here we have points A, B and C and so to find the fourth point to complete the harmonic set we can just draw a red line through each of these three points and that'll make a triangle and then we can label the vertices of that triangle QRS and then if we take a look at this line which goes in this case from R to B then we see that that's going to intersect our triangle at another point so we'll call that fourth point P and then you can see that PQRS are the vertices of a complete quadrangle, which, um, if sectioned by the dotted line, um, generates this quadrangular set. And so we have this fourth point, which we find by drawing in the extra line. We'll call that F. And um, we usually denote this by saying that... Um, well, we write H, A, B, C, F um, in words. That means that F is the harmonic conjugate of C with respect to the pair A and B. And we've um, used this sort of notation of coexitors involving P, Q, R and S uh, just to be consistent with previous lectures. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of my favourite ideas in projective geometry, which is the notion of a trilinear polar of a point. So we'll encounter more and more of these ideas about polarity as we, as we get deeper into the subject, but essentially the idea is that there's a duality between points and lines, and using various objects, um, in this case a triangle, and later on uh, conics, one can map points onto lines and lines onto points. So essentially we sort of lay down an object, in this case a triangle, and it almost works like a mirror, um, which gives every point a sort of line, which is like it's dual and every line 
and so we call that line the polar of the point and vice versa every line is associated with a point known as its pole a good way to remember it is that lines are longer than points and the word polar is longer than the word pole okay so how does this idea work well it's really elegant um, you start off with a triangle PQR and we'll have this extra point S that can be any point anywhere as long as it's not coincident with any of these vertices P, Q and R. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find a line which is called the trilinear polar of capital S. And so I'll tell you about Poincelot's uh, construction. Just before I get into it, just as a matter of uh, interest, um, Poncelot had a rather interesting life. He was a, I think he was a Frenchman, he was a soldier, and he got caught in a, in a war and he was injured. And um, when the enemy army were sweeping the battlefield, they found him and put him in prison. And while he was in prison, he, uh, well, I suppose he had a lot of time in his hands, and he remembered his mathematical education and essentially derived a lot of the foundational results of predictive geometry while he was in prison. So, um, so it's a kind of interesting uh, little notes that this subject arose for, for that reason, amongst others. Anyway, um, so this is his idea. And it's that we take this point S and we're going to do some constructions. So, firstly, we're going to draw the so-called Sevignon lines through this point. The Sevignon lines are the three lines which go through the vertices of a triangle and S. So there will be the lines PS, QS and RS. So I've drawn them here in red. And we're going to look at where these so-called Sevignon lines cut through the opposite edges of the triangle. And we'll call those vertices A, B and C. So for example, A is the place where the Sevignon line PS cuts through the triangle edge RQ, which is opposite P. Um, so we defined A, B and C as shown. And now what we're going to do is sort of invoke the notion of harmonic conjugates to complete this construction. Um, it's actually fairly simple. So if you take a look at this line QR, we've just, const we've just drawn a point A on that line via making the Savignon through S. And what we do then is we draw an extra point on that line, which we shall call D, which is the harmonic conjugate of A with respect to Q and R. And that's actually really easy to do because to find this point D, it turns out that all we have to do actually is just to find where this line BC intersects with this line QR. And that'll be point D. And so then we'll have that QR AD is going to be a harmonic set. And in a totally analogous way, we can find the harmonic conjugate E of B with respect to P and R and we can find the harmonic conjugate and we can find the harmonic conjugate F of C with respect to P and Q. So basically by drawing in these extra three lines which I've shown in blue, green and yellow we find these remaining four we find these extra three points one on each edge of the triangle. And now the claim 
is that these new three generated points, which I've drawn in purple, D, E, F, are actually going to lie on a straight line. And we have a special name for that straight line. We call it the tripolar of S, of capital S. So we often denote it as little s. Why do those three points lie in a straight line? Well, it's actually a consequence of Zarg's theorem. Because if you think about it, the triangle, the vertices, okay, so the triangle P, Q, and R, and the triangle A, B, and C are both perspective <coughs> from the points capital S. And so Zarg's theorem implies that those two triangles are also going to be perspective from a line. And a bit of thought should convince you that that line is, in fact, simply little s, the trilinear polar of capital S. And sort of conversely, we, we call the point capital S the trilinear pole of little s. So this is um, Poincelot's um, construction, and it's really such a deep idea because every single point is now coupled with a line somewhere and vice versa so it um it really has some deep implications we'll get back to more of them as we continue our exploration okay so okay so one really interesting idea which um sort of touches on ideas to do with the infinite and analysis is the notion of a harmonic net. So basically, as I've already said, if we have three points on a line, three distinct points, A, B, and C, then we can find a fourth point, D, which is going to end up making a harmonic set. So A, B, C, and D will be a harmonic set. Well, what we can do then is we can just continue that idea of taking this set of points, A, B, C, then we'll add an extra point in D that forms a harmonic set together with A, B, and C. And then we can take three more points from that set, any three points, and we can find a fourth point to go with those to form another harmonic set, and so on and so forth. We can just carry on taking a triple from our set and, and adding an extra point to that triple to generate a new harmonic set and including that extra point in our new enlarged set. So when a point <coughs> D belongs to this kind of set of points that we get by iteratively adding more and more harmonic sets, we'll say that D is harmonically related to the points A, B and C. And we'll also use some notation. Let's call the set of all harmonically related points to A, B and C the harmonic net of A, B and C. And we shall write that as R of A, B and C. So if you are looking at, let's say, Euclidean space or a continuum, then there's going to be, an, given any, any harmonic net, is going to be an infinite set of points on a line. And if you just look at, let's say, the uh, real number line, then you're going to get a, if you start with a rational, three rational numbers, then um, you're going to get this infinite set of points. It won't contain every single member of the real line. It won't contain the rational numbers like pi, but it will contain <laughs> enough points. Let's, let's put it like that. I don't want to get too sidetracked into the discussion of infinite sets. Um, so anyway, here's one way we can generate a harmonic net. We start with A, B, and C, and we can just keep generating the next point as shown in this picture by sort of drawing these crisscross lines. 
uh, we can get this harmonic set a sorry this harmonic net containing points a b c d e and f and so on and so forth the set is infinite and we call such a sequence generated in this manner a harmonic sequence so given the harmonic sets satisfy some very um, strong conditions harmonic nets also have some very special properties um, for example as we showed last time harmonic the projection of a harmonic set is a harmonic set and it follows then since harmonic nets are just like overlapping collections of harmonic sets it follows that the projection of a harmonic net must be another harmonic net and we also have a kind of stronger idea which is that if we have a projection which actually leaves each of our three distinct points a b and c invariant in other words it sends a to a b to b and c to c well then that projection is going to leave every single point in the harmonic net R, A, B, and C, R, A, B, C, invariant, which, if you think about it, is quite a dramatic claim because this is a potentially very large set. I just want to note, though, um, harmonic nets don't necessarily have to be infinite. It depends on what you're doing your projective geometry on. I mean, obviously, if you're working in a finite projective plane, like, say, the the Fano plane or something, um, then your harmonic net is only going to be finite. And it's, I think it's very interesting to sort of compare and contrast this, how this idea works in finite and infinite projective planes. Anyway, um, another really important result follows from something we showed quite a while ago which is basically that um, if we have four points on a line, then we can do projections to reorder the sequence in which those points lie. And um, a consequence of this is the following result, which says that, in fact, a harmonic net is uniquely determined by any three of its points, by any three distinct points. So, in other words, um, if you're told three points which belong to a particular harmonic net, then, at least in principle, you can determine the entire set, or as much of the set as you want, um, and it's uniquely determined by any three of its points. So you don't have to use A, B, and C to generate it. You can use any three points within.